Hey everybody, I'm Ellen here at eTrailer.com. We're going to be taking a quick look and talk about some of the features of this multimeter. The nicest thing about this is that it does have a nice large LCD display, so it gives you a really easy readout of any of your um, metrics so that you can see what's going on, make sure that your wiring is working properly, you can test functions to make sure that you're getting the right connections made and that everything is coming through as it should. So I'm going to test it out on a couple different things just to show you how well it works. So I've got a battery here and also a tester with some wiring on it just to give you a couple different scenarios of things that you can test with this. Uh, of course, you just always want to follow the directions as far as how to use it. If you're trying to read any kind of amps, you always want to use the fused ports, but most of the time you're probably going to be using these two ports. Uh, it's typically the most common use for these guys, but let's take a closer look and I'll put it through some of those tests. So turning it on, you can see that nice digital display makes it really easy to see what's going on. There's also a hold button here, so if you want to hold it at uh, the whatever it's reading out, you just press that. It's actually kind of a, a little weird because a lot of other multimeters are set so that whenever you press the hold button and then you go to test something, it'll just hold at the highest readout. But for this one, it just holds at whatever the metric or the the, uh, the number is when you press that button. Just untangled my leads here and put them on this battery, but as soon as I do, nothing happens. Just stays right there. So that's because that hold button is on. As soon as I take it off and then actually get things connected and turn it over to the right setting on DC volts. Now you can see we're getting a readout of 12 volts as we should. You can hit hold, take my leads away, and it stays there. But if I try to go do something else, it's just going to stay static. So that's something to keep in mind when we were first playing with this here in the shop. We uh, were afraid that it wasn't working, but we didn't realize that that hold button was on. The easiest way to figure out if it is, there's a little tiny H that pops up whenever hold is in use. So if it's not working, you notice that little H is there, press the hold button to make sure that you clear that. Also got some little alligator clamps. So this also makes it pretty nice if you're wanting to test out a battery or you want to test something and kind of hold on to it rather than having to hold it with the little prongs or hold it with your hands. You just kind of want to make sure that you get those pushed in all the way. There's a couple of little spots in there. I know it's going to be hard to see, but you just kind of want to make sure that you get it all the way seated in the housing to get a good connection. And then again, you can just clamp on to be able to test. So it makes it a little bit easier. But as you can see, those clamps can also come off. So I'm just going to pop that back in there. No big deal. Now, the other big function that you'll use a multimeter for is to test out wiring to uh, make sure that the ports are what you want or, or that everything is hooked up correctly. So I've got some six pole wiring here and a tester box connected to it so I can run some functions. Turn that on put my ground in place, and then you can just go around to test whatever's live to make sure that you know where that signal is coming through. And again, this is where that little kickstand is really handy, so you can just set this and you don't have to hold on to it. You can just see what's going on. So I can switch to a different signal, go through my pins again to figure out which one the signal's coming through. So really for any kind of wiring, this is just a handy accessory to have. It's the safest way to test any wiring, the most accurate, instead of just uh, guessing, color coding, you can't always trust because some people go off of uh, different metrics or sometimes they just don't even color code things at all. So having a multimeter for redoing any kind of wiring or double checking anything, it's just a good thing to have for all kinds of automotive uses at home or again, just any kind of electrical job that you might have. 
All in all, I think this is a pretty nice one just because of the, how big that display is. The little kickstand is also nice. The hold button is maybe my least favorite thing just because it can end up being a little bit confusing. One other thing I do like um, is that if you happen to want to use it for some of the different functions, maybe you want to check the amps, it will tell you which ports to use down here at the bottom. So that's kind of nice that it gives you a little indicator of which ones you need to connect to. You probably won't end up using this side very often, but if you do, it's just nice to have that uh, kind of as a, a, an easy indicator of which ones you should connect it up to, because it can sometimes be a little bit confusing with these guys. That's pretty much it for our quick look at the digital multimeter. I hope that this has been helpful in deciding if this is the right one for you. We do have a couple other options available here at eTrailer.com, as well as a lot of other wiring, accessories, and parts. So if you need anything else, definitely check us out. Thanks for watching.